Hey guys, what's up? It's me again, Tom from TTT Tom's Tech Time. Welcome to another episode of the Drone Film School. Today I want to be sharing with you the eight most cinematic looking alike angles, camera angles for filming with drones. Let's get this episode started, but before we do so, let me share a link with you that you should definitely check out. It's tomstechtime.com slash DFS. There you find buyers, guides, all episodes of the Drone Film School and a lot more. Just check it out and of course don't forget to click the download section to enhance your work. But right now let's get started and let's take a look at the eight most epic camera angles. The unveiling shot is a powerful opener. You can introduce the audience to new scenery and create tension. Filming an unveiling shot is easy. You need to have a fore and a background layer. You start flying low and smoothly raise the drone's height until the back layer unfolds. And by filming with at least two layers, we prevent the clip from looking boring as the image builds up and is not already visible at the very first frame. The unveiling shot is my favorite opener to either a new scenery or to a complete new film. Some people have problems finding a clear foreground and a background for creating unveiling shots. It's actually pretty simple. You can use everything basically as a foreground. Some trees, a basic wall, a row of cars, whatsoever. It's not really about the foreground. It's about the background and about the uh, smooth uplifting of the drone and the unfolding of the background. I think everyone can create an unveiling shot easily. The lookup shot is a great alternative to the unveiling shot. If your project shows several locations, you can mix both openers. And filming the lookup shot is easy again. The camera points all the way down to the ground and while you fly the drone either forwards or backwards, you can now smoothly tilt the camera up. And of course there are other variations, such as shown right now, that allow you to use the lookup shot within a scene, not only at the beginning, for example, to keep an object in the center of the frame by flying forwards or backwards and tilting the gimbal only. I cannot mention often enough to perform lookup shots really slowly. Fly slowly, tilt the camera slowly and of course in post-production keep the clips as short as possible as lookup shots tend to um, have a long duration. The pullback shot might be the most powerful shot for every aerial film project. You can use it over and over again if you only add a few other shots of course. Contrary to a normal forward flight, we can again create excitement because the scenery is not visible at the first frame. And next to that, flying backwards prevents the propellers from showing up in the upper segment of the footage. And how to perform a pullback shot? You simply fly the drone backwards and that's basically it. And if you want to enhance the shot, check if you can fly backwards and close to the ground or to objects at the very same time, but please pay some extra attention when flying low. Flying backwards often means flying without obstacle avoidance. So only keep that in mind if you're, for example, using a DJI Phantom 4 or DJI Mavic Pro. No aerial film should be ever missing the head over shot. 
Most drone owners have performed one probably, but there are two techniques that really enhance your aerial films and make them look professional. Let me briefly introduce them. Filming the first variation is easy. You first hover over the center of an exciting looking ground. You then raise the drone's height and slowly rotate it meanwhile. Done. A great shot your audience will love for sure. The second variation makes you fly your drone forwards or backwards while following a clear path at the ground, for example a street as shown in the test footage of mine. Fly smoothly and especially slowly to create cinematic shots that will look like film. Never ever rush when it comes to head over shots. As always, when it comes to head over shots, keep things as slow as possible. The slower you fly, the better the shot will look like. And right now we're gonna go for a short break and see you back in 40 seconds. Welcome to the all new Tom's Tech Time website. Let me show you around. Dozens of how-to videos, reviews and comparisons are waiting for you. All categorized, all free, all ready to watch. At tomstechtime.com, you're only one click away from our highly viewed segment, The Drone Film School. There you can find video lessons, buyer's guides and many filmmaking templates. Don't own a drone yet? Click the deals page and find the hottest offers on the web. And if you already have a drone, enhance its capabilities with the most highly recommended accessories for filmmaking, safety and a better flying experience. Tomstechtime.com, teaching the world how to fly drones. The cam crane shot is easy but powerful. It basically imitates the movement of a real big camera crane. An ideal shot contains out of a fore and a background. You slowly raise the drone's height while smoothly tilting the camera down. Of course we can get way higher than with a basic camera crane, but keep in mind that we want our composition to look like film we're used to. Fly conservative and slowly and you'll achieve great results. If you like my work, you can check out the equipment that I am using myself. You'll find most products down there in the video description below. And of course, all products listed at tomstechtime.com slash my equipment. The course lock shot is named after an intelligent flight mode that can be chosen with all DJI drones. It allows you to fly straight lines while rotating the drone and camera. That way you can pass by any object and keep it in the center of the frame. It's a must for every passionate drone filmmaker. A link pointing at my course lock tutorial can be found in the video description below. Even though flight modes like the follow me mode, active track or orbiting around objects those get a lot of attention, I can only mention that the course lock function, even though it's pretty old already, is the most important intelligent flight mode for cinematographers. So you should definitely check out my tutorial if you haven't been using the course lock function yet. The slider shot imitates a movement we all know from real films. We're trying to film a dolly shot with our drone. A clear fore and background is a must to visualize the motion. We fly really slowly and as close as possible to the foreground. That way the composition looks a lot more exciting and we add depth. You can either keep things conservative and only imitate a normal dolly, or you can add some drone-like movements by for example changing the altitude in flight. That is completely up to you. I have been using sliders for years when I was filming with my basic DSLRs and still when filming with the bigger cameras as right now, I am using sliders as well. So I think that we have the capability of just creating these shots with a drone is incredible and especially if we can mix them up with some special movements, for example, raising some height is just incredible. The 
The tripod shot can be performed easily. You hover steadily and smoothly rotate the drone in air. That's it already. Did you know the DJI Mavic Pro features a tripod mode for slow and really precise rotations? Check it out if you haven't already, a product link can be found in the video description below. If you want to enhance your aerials, check out the other videos of the Drone Film School. You can find them all sorted on tomstechtime.com slash DFS or you can of course check out my channel on YouTube. Next to that it would be awesome if you would leave a thumb up and if you would subscribe to never ever miss any upcoming episodes again. And finally you can join my Facebook group, facebook.com slash group slash Tom's Tech Time. Thanks for watching, thanks for joining in. This was Tom from TDT Tom's Tech Time, over and out, stay tuned, fly safe.